Imagine assigning unique ID numbers to students in a class. Each student gets a different ID. No two IDs are the same. That's exactly how injective functions work. An injective function, also known as a one-to-one -one function, ensures that each element of the domain maps to a unique element of the codomain. In simple terms, each input produces a unique output. Now here's something important to remember. Every element in the domain X must map to something in the codomain Y, but not every element in the codomain Y needs to be matched, as you can see here. Another key thing to note is that if you find two different X values giving the same Y value, the function fails the one-to-one -one test and is not injective. So we say in an injective or one-to-one -one function, if f of a is equal to f of b, then a is equal to b. Two ways to prove that a function is injective are the algebraic method and the graphical method. Now let's try some examples. Prove that the function f of x equals 2x plus 1 is injective using the algebraic method. The first step is to equate f of a to f of b. Now f of a is 2a plus 1, while f of b is 2b plus 1. Now subtract 1 from both sides to get 2a equals 2b. Divide both sides by 2 to get a equals b. So f of x is injective since f of a equals f of b leads to a equals b. Every unique x gives a unique y. That's a one-to-one -one mapping. Now let's try to prove that the same function is injective using the graphical method. First, we'll need to draw the function. Since the function represents the equation of a straight line, we only need two points. One way to get the two points is to do a table of values. When x equals 0, y equals 1. And when x equals 1, y equals 3. So we plot the coordinates 0, 1, and 1, 3. Connect the points, and we have our line. Now a function is injective if any horizontal line drawn cuts the graph at most once. As you can see, any horizontal line that is drawn will only cut the graph of the function at most once. Hence, the function f of x equals 2x plus 1 is injective or 1 to 1. Let's try another example. Show that the function 5x plus 4 over 3x minus 2 is injective. Recall that the function is injective when if f of a equals f of b leads to a equals b. So first we assume f of a equals f of b. So 5a plus 4 over 3 a minus 2 is equal to 5b plus 4 over 3b minus 2. To simplify, we can cross multiply. Now expand the brackets on both sides. Subtract 15ab from both sides and a negative 8 to both sides. Then group the terms in a on the left and the terms in b on the right to get 22a equals 22b. Divide both sides by 22 and we get a equals b. So f of x is injective since f of a equals f of b leads to a equals b. Now let's look at a function that is not injective. For example, f of x equals x squared. To check if the function is injective, we'll begin with the algebraic method. Recall that the function is injective when f of a equals f of b leads to a equals b. Assume f of a equals f of b. So we get a square equals b square. Take square root of both sides, and we get plus or minus a equals plus or minus b. This means that a equals b, or a equals minus b. Hence, the function is not injective. For the function to be injective, a must be equal to only b. To show this graphically, we can draw a graph of the parabola by plotting some points from a table of values. When x equals 0, y equals 0. When x equals 2, y equals 4. And when x equals negative 2, y is also equal to 4. So we have a many-to-one mapping. 
since two different x values are mapped to the same y value. Graphically, we can see a horizontal line cutting the graph two places, which tells us that the function is not one-to-one, -one, hence not injective. Now you might be wondering, if f of x equals x squared is an injective, can we make it injective somehow? The answer is yes, by restricting its domain. The reason this function fails the one-to-one -one test is because for every positive x, there's a matching negative x that gives the same y value. For example, both 2 and negative 2 give 4. But if we only allow x values greater than or equal to 0, we're looking at just the right half of the parabola. Now every input gives a unique output. The horizontal line will cut the graph only once. That means f is injective when the domain is restricted to x greater than or equal to zero. In the same way, we could also restrict the domain to x less than or equal to zero, the left half of the parabola. The key idea is this, by limiting the domain or the x values, we remove the duplicate y values and make the function one to one. So even though the function is not injective across all real numbers, it can be injective on a restricted domain. For parabolas, we restrict the domain at the x-coordinate of the turning point. So in this case, either x greater than or equal to zero, or x less than or equal to zero. It all depends on which side of the parabola you choose to keep. In the next video, we'll take a deep dive into surjective functions. If you enjoyed this video, give us a like, subscribe, and share it with your classmates. See you soon.